I will, uh, I'll be talking about this today, but, uh, uh, you know, great skill doesn't just happen. You don't open one of those Kinder Joy eggs and all of a sudden you've got great skill. Even a talented person puts immense hours in to refine it. I believe the things, the gifts and skills that God gives us is almost like gold that is buried below, below 400 feet of solid rock. You know, otherwise we would not appreciate it, uh, what he has given us. Um, but I just want to say that um, many times in the positions that we are in, we don't uh, often recognize all that somebody does in another position. For example, many church members grumble about the pastor. If that's you, please raise your hand if you've been grumbling. <laughs> But if you were the pastor, you would suddenly realize that most of your grumblings don't make sense because now you see things from another side. You hear what I'm saying? Or have you ever been the employee and you're like the boss, oh, the boss, and then you became the boss. You're like, gosh, my boss was actually pretty good. <laughs> and now you've got people grumbling about you. We should be such a gracious people, realizing that we can only see what we can see and assume that the people in our lives are doing the best that they can. And that's why it says to pray for our leaders. And Pastor Arthur's going to lead us at the end uh, uh, in that. But uh, I've got such an exciting message for you today that I set a record in the first service of the most silent response. <laughs> even baby James didn't even make a noise. I was like longing, even baby James, just cry like somebody do something. <laughs> because I'm talking about hard work. There you go. That's exactly what happened in the first service. How it is biblical for us to work hard. We think, uh, uh, you know, the fullness of God's promise is, you know, for us to get to heaven and we walk around with little, uh, uh, you know, grape leaves covering our private parts, and, and we just like point, hey you, hey you, as we walk down the street. I got bad news about heaven. We're going to work. We're going to work. So uh, just remember that. So, so um, here we find this, this, uh, uh, this story in the New Testament as we're taking this journey through the Bible, and I I had a fantastic uh, a video, but the sound's not working, of this um, person coming to interview for a job. And uh, uh, the boss says to her, well, I'm going to need you here at eight. And she's like, I don't understand. And it's like, what don't you understand? She's like, like eight in the morning? <laughs> like, who goes to work at eight? And the boss is like, I do. And she's like, no, you know, I only get to Starbucks at about 10 where I get my double pump latte, this, 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 you know, kind of thing. So one of the things that, that uh, has been lost is this, this character that, that is formed in hard work. Uh, we are living in a society where we try to do the least for the most, right? So people are coming right out of college and they're wanting the same salary as somebody who's worked for 30 years. COVID didn't help that, where everybody was getting checks in the mail to do nothing. Um, there is a, a, a live news interview, and, and my friend Megan would have seen that because she watches all of these things. But the guy was talking, you know, when they have commentators on a, on a news uh, show. And he dropped his phone, and it revealed he was on the toilet while he was doing this here. The character of that man to not have taken his own life, I must tell you, that is a strong man. But this thing of hard work, so, so Paul, I, I, I really stand by my belief that most Christians today would not like Paul. You're like, oh, if Paul was alive, I would have a Bible study with him. One week you would have a Bible study and then never want to, you would delete his Facebook, you would block his text. You're like, this guy's too much. He's not gentle at all. So Paul is writing to the Corinthians. Now remember, 
Paul has traveled all around. He's, he's, he's established these churches. He's put his blood, sweat, and tears, and souls into these places. And then many of them started to drift off, and he would write these letters of correction. But Paul's writing now, and he says, he says this in, in 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But whatever I am, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me. And this applies to every single one of us. There is no room for arrogance in the body of Christ. Because anything special about any of us, it's Jesus being reflected through us. So how can any of us walk around with, with our chests out and puffed up with pride when anything of worth is only because of God and only because of Jesus? If you enjoy my preaching today, then praise be to Jesus. Then he gets the glory. And if you didn't uh, enjoy my message, then that's on you. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Please write an email to Pastor Arthur and list all the points Um, so he says, it's all because God poured out his special favor on me. So he's, he's saying, listen, anything good, I'm giving thanks to God for this. And not without results. This is, this is such a powerful uh, statement. He's saying that what God has deposited in my, in my life is not without results. How many of us can say that? That there's fruit in our life for what Jesus went through on the cross that it's resulting today. Have you ever seen uh, uh, somebody, you know, with their Jesus shirt and all of that stuff, and then they interact with somebody, and it's like, mm, I'm not sure Jesus went much past the shirt on that person. <laughs> there has to be fruit. There has to be fruit in how we drive, when we're cutting people off, when we're getting mad because somebody took the last parking at HEB, and now you have to park somewhere else. When, when, when things go wrong, whatever it might be, without result. It's not without result. And, and that's something when, we, when we're looking into the mirror of the word, we are, we are saying, Lord, where, where am, I, am I living without result? It's all because of him. But then he says this, and this I love, for I have worked harder than any other apostles. Yet, it's, it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. This, I, I was so excited to, to talk about this today because hard work is a biblical concept, and I'm going to show that to you, and it comes with fruit. But Paul is firmly established that anything that's happening that he's able to do is because of God. How many of you know that you witnessed the, the miracle hand of God this morning without even knowing it? You're waking up. Like that is a blessing. When we wake up in the morning, instead of going, oh, it's Monday, go like, oh, I'm alive. <laughs> I remember when I had a, a kidney stone uh, on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the next day, you know, once we had dealt with all of that stuff and, and I woke up that next morning so grateful. Like I'm telling you, the colors, I'd never seen colors like that. The sky was so blue, like I was just, <sighs> I was like, I wish I could live like that every single day. So he says, I worked harder than any of the other apostles. But here's what I, what I want to show you is, um, who here believes that Paul was absolutely called by God? He had a calling, he had a plan, he had a purpose. Let's, let's get the backstory right. Paul is on his, on his horse and Jesus appears to him. And he's blinded, he's taken somewhere, and then God speaks to, to um, the prophet to come and, and deal with him. And he says this, God is talking to him in Acts 9, 15. But the Lord said, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings, as well as the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. Who wants the calling of Paul? with a side of suffering. Here's, here's what's so important and what I wanna to get to the root of today. I meet so many people that tell me about their dreams and their callings and their spiritual gifts, but they don't wanna do anything about it because it's wrapped in hard work. 
here's proof that you can be absolutely called by God. I mean, Jesus appeared to him. Has Jesus appeared to anybody here? If so, please come talk to me. I'd love to know about it. Jesus appears to him. And then he's ministered to for three days while God downloads what his life's going to be, what he's going to do. And then he goes and works harder than anybody else to accomplish it. You, are you getting what I'm saying? What God has deposited in you, what God has called you to, don't be scared of the hard work that's involved for that thing, thing to come to the surface. It's like, well, if God has done it, then it's just going to be easy. Uh, 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 look, this is just a, a very limited, probably fleshly thing I'm about to say. But I shudder when I'm doing uh, 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 interviews, and in the first five seconds, somebody tells me they're a Christian. Then I'm like, oh, it's one of these. You know, that want to flash the Christian card so that they can pass go and collect $200 for doing nothing. And if they say Holy Spirit in the first minute, you're gone. <laughs> There's no reason to say Holy Spirit during an interview. I'm just telling you right now. Have the Holy Spirit. Don't talk about Him in an interview. You hear what I'm saying? Because most times these people that are touting Jesus and touting, it's, it's, it's this like uh, uh, the, the A&M ring, you know. You should hire me. You should hire me not because I did anything, but because of my ring. That's what it's like. No, Christianity should be shown, what did Paul say? By our works, our faith is shown. And I want, starting in Velocity Church, for when, when people find out that we are a Christian, they say that's why they work so hard. That's why they're so honest. That's why they, they, they go the extra mile. You hear what I'm saying? Paul worked harder than any other apostles. That's not a lie. We wouldn't have made it into Scripture. Yet he had one of the greatest callings. And yet he worked harder than anybody else to see that calling come. But he says, but it's only by God's grace. I can tell you in my life what the Lord has enabled me to do is only by God's grace. Who else can say that? Okay, let me, let me how many of you are moms? Raise your hands. The only reason you can mother is because of God's grace. How about dads? Raise your hand. Do you ever say the only reason that I can father is not because of these 12 books I read, but well done for reading books because we work hard to hone our skill. It's because of the grace of God, but I work hard. Husbands, wives, whatever it is. Yes, God made us one. God put us together. But then there's hard work involved. I work so hard to be the most amazing husband my wife has ever seen. You hear what I'm saying? God gives us the calling. He gives us the gift. And then it's our responsibility to work it. This is God's design. And I'm going to prove it to you. And it comes with blessing. So I... Uh, I'm going to share some stories that have happened recently. And if this was you, don't be offended because I don't remember who it was. But just laugh like everyone else. <laughs> then no one will know it was you. But I had somebody write to me because we're hiring, a, a, we're looking for a, a cook uh, to help us with the restaurant. And they said, like, cooking is my spiritual gift. Like, first line. Great. So I sent her the menu which is South African foods, and she said, I don't cook South African foods. <laughs> to which I wrote back, and I said, just so you know, spiritual gifts span cultures. <laughs> God is infinite. Oh, I don't do South African food. You hear what I'm saying? If you're going to claim God's name, then claim it all the way. Or somebody, you know, it's like, this is, this is from God. Like, I've heard these words. This is from God. This is for me. I'm the perfect person. I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. How many hours do I need to work? Probably about 12 to 16. Oh, no, no, no. This is not what God has. Well, tell your schizophrenic God I said hi. <laughs> you 
just dropping for anybody. We're so quick to pass up this stuff and, and God is so confused, but it makes, it makes us all look so bad. How do you say this is for me from God? This is like Paul. Like Jesus appeared to me, people. He gave me the gospel. And now, you know, I'm going to do something else. You, we have to be those people that are faithful. We have to be those people that are stable. We have to be those people that you can rely on because it's God within us. It's not in our own strength that we can do these things. You with me? And whoever's baby is making that noise, thank you for the feedback. Like, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> so let me, let me read this. Even while we were with you, this is 2 Thessalonians 3, 10 to 12. Even while we were with you, we gave you this command. No, don't leave. Keep your baby here. <laughs> okay. We gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Come on. Those that are not willing to work will not get to eat. Laziness is not a spiritual gift. It's not a spiritual gift. This, 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 uh, 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 there is wonderful blessing in taking care of the poor and those in need. But a lot of the social programs that we have are unbiblical because it's, it's, it's going against the word of God. If you are willing, to, if you are able to work, you need to work no matter what that is. If all you can do is staple papers because you've got two fingers, man, use those two fingers to the glory of God. And, and I'm going to explain, I'm going to explain this why, okay? Explain, I don't know what I just said there. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Sorry, I read the wrong verse. Colossians 3, 23 to 24. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. How many of you wake up and go to a job and work as if you're working unto the Lord? What if you are, a, you know, street construction and you're the guy that just puts out the, how do you put out those cones as if you're working for the Lord? Because there's honor in the job that's putting out the cones. There's honor in every single job. Only in our society do we rate a doctor more than whatever. Whatever you are able to do is what it says. Do it as unto the Lord. So you put that with a smile. And you thank the Lord for your job. And, and you're asking the Lord for your co-workers, what you can do in the person who's driving by. <laughs> what, whatever it is. That's the attitude we go when we go to work, when we know that we are working for the Lord and not the, the man, the, the boss, the, the whatever. I work as unto the Lord because I am an eternal being. I'm not just this temporal thing right here. Joseph was so good at that. He went from the favorite son to a slave in Potiphar's house and he worked hard. He didn't like, I'm a slave. I can't believe this guy. I'm going to pee in his tea. You watch me. <laughs> in South Africa, there was a video of a, of a, a, a McDonald's worker peeing in the Coca-Cola. And I knew it because I knew this wasn't lemon Coke that I had. <laughs> you don't have to like your job, but find purpose in it. Because remember, sometimes we are going through suffering and not for the sake of, of nothing, because we are being refined, we are being transformed, we are being prepared. You hear what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. Because I know that the Lord has me where I need to be. Even if I don't like it, I like Him. And so I say, thank you, Lord, for this. And I'm going to get the most that I can out of this moment right here and right now. What can I learn? How can I change? And how can I be a blessing in the situation that I'm in. 
I thought someone was rushing the stage. It's <laughs> about to. <laughs> Proverbs 14, 23. All hard work brings profit, but mere talk leads only to profit, uh, poverty. Who's got those friends? Always got a big idea. Man, we should do this. We should do this. We should do this. We should do this. I say to people, like, do it. Oh, no, but you can't. No, no. Try it. Have a chance. If you've got these ideas, at what point do you, do you say, God, your ideas aren't valid? I'm not even going to try. Hard work. All hard work brings profit. It's too many people with just ideas and dreams that will never see them accomplished because they don't want to go through the hard work to do it. It really, this, this really fires me up uh, uh, when I see this. Now, outside of the church, fine. But for us who claim to have this almighty, infinite God who is merciful and gracious, right? I, I think about uh, uh, business ideas and all of that, like getting out on an ice rink where you've never skated before. And you're like, but how blessed are we that we have an almighty God who can correct us and move us and stuff, but he's not forcing us out on the ice. We have to do that. How can we have a dream? How can we have a, a calling, a purpose, and do nothing with it? Isn't that crazy? Genesis 2 verse 15, God's plan. The Lord took man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Paradise, we are talking about the perfect God's design for earth was the garden of Eden. And guess what's the first thing he did? Adam, you like this? Very nice. Okay, get to work. You hear what I'm saying? There was no free lunch. Because free lunch does not do well with us as humans. We don't appreciate things that we just get given. But when we work for things, we appreciate them. And as we're working, we are changed and transformed and grown. My son said he wants to be a boss one day. I said, great. Now go be a boss of this lawnmower outside. And he appreciates it. Now he's doing construction. He appreciates it. When he looks at a house to go like, oh, I know what it takes for that to be built. Amen. Don't under, undermine the beauty of hard work and what it takes. If I had a big corporation that had a mail room, that's where my children would start in the mailroom, even if I was the president or the CEO, my children will start in the mailroom. And that's what I believe God does with many of us. He's got this incredible calling for us, but it comes as an opportunity at the mailroom. And we're like, no, no, that can't be for me. God's called me to minister to millions. You know, I've seen a vision. Yeah, start in the mailroom. And be excited for your job. I started my first job uh, in America making potato salad. To the glory of God. Up to my elbows, literally. Had these. <laughs> I was so excited when my mom came to have her first meal. And I gave her this potato salad. Like, is this the best potato salad you've ever had? And she said, Yes. Because she's my mom. And my brother said, no. <laughs> you know, our, uh, our little ranch now supports 15 families. Now, there's much, there's, there's organizations and there's people who represent businesses and that that employ people. I want to tell you how wonderful that is. Do you know that most of America's economy is because of small businesses? It's not the large corporations. It's the little, thank God for the little moms and pops that, that work to create something more than just for themselves, but to employ somebody else. Do you know that that's biblical and I'm going to show it to you? 
We now take care of 15 families. You know what 15 is more than? Zero. I'm very proud that this little farm is taking care of 15 families, but it's come at our hard work. Where's Ugo? Is he here? There he is. See that guy waving his hand? That's Ugo. He's our ranch manager. And this guy knows how to work hard. And because of his hard work, he, we are able to employ other people. You see, what he has done, he has worked unto the Lord. He has put in extra hours. He has done all of these things. And now other people are able to come because of it. And this is the key of who we are as Christians when we are working hard. It's not just to add to our stack, but we are working so that the kingdom of God can advance and can keep going. Tomorrow we have somebody arriving. My cousin wrote to me to say we have somebody in a very desperate place, literally at the end of their rope. Can we give them a job? And you know what? We can. Because of hard work. We are able to say yes to someone that we would have had to say no if we were just getting by. Listen to this verse, Ephesians 4, 28. Anyone who has been stealing must no longer steal. Is that for you? Thank you. Please stop stealing. <laughs> if something's gone missing while you're at church, but must work doing something useful with their own hands. And, and here's, listen to this, that they may have something to share with those in need. Amen. Isn't that incredible? When I get up, Lord, help me to be more than what I am so that we have something to share with those in need. It's not just about me. It's not just about upgrading my life all the time. No, no. It's about saying, Lord, what would you have me do? I've got some extra wheat. What do we do? You want us planting this? You want us giving this away? Farming is such a beautiful thing, and, and that's why I believe Jesus used it, because you will work hard for years and not see any fruit, and then one day, poof, Ugo loves to come to my door with like the first of everything. We just had our first mango that Stephen Brady planted three years ago. We just had it now. It was delicious. Right? Because we know the work that went into that so that somebody else could, could eat that. When you see us carrying a watermelon, it's not like the one you get from H-E-B where you just throw it in your cart, man. We walk with this thing. We name each one. This is Elijah. <laughs> Make a quality decision that wherever the Lord has you, even in prison, you are going to work hard. You are going to be a person of character so that when people look at you, you have nothing to apologize for when they want to know about Jesus. Be the best at whatever you do, no matter how lowly you might think that job is. Be the best, best best that you can be. Be so honest. Be so helpful. Uh, uh, there was a girl that works at the tax office. Uh, we needed to get a, a, a license plate for my wife's car. Uh, uh, it was a big ordeal. I don't know why, but we went to the, 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 the tax office, and you would not think that the person at the tax office is the one to solve this problem. I don't think she was, but she said, I'll do this for you. She went out of her way to do a job that wasn't her job, and I think it took like a week, and she was sending off to the state, and she was doing all this and this and this, and she got it solved for us. That was not her job. But I feel my assumption is she was working for a higher authority to go the extra mile to do whatever needs to be done. Let's be those people. Let's not be the people who point over there. Let's be the people who say, come, let me show you. And walk with people where they need to go because we work hard. When people say to me, how many hours do I need to work? I say, as many as it takes. And that's how we have to approach our dreams. I will do whatever it takes. There was a, 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 somebody who said, how do I be as successful as you to some hugely successful man? And 
there was a, a fountain with water and he took the man's head and he shoved it under water. And he held him down. And he, just before he suffocated, he picked him up and he shoved him down again. And then he brought out the guy like, <gasps> and he said, when you want success as badly as you want air, you will have it. Now, our goal is not success. Our goal is to walk with God and to, and to use the gifts and be everything that he has created us to be. And when we want it like that, to please him that much, we will have it. We will walk in the calling that He has because we have no fear of what we're facing because we're going all out for God. And you know what? Bring on suffering because it's not eternal. And God will walk with us through the fiery furnace. He will walk with us in the lion's den. Whatever that suffering looks like, we do not go through it alone and we don't have to feel the full weight of it either. So many people, uh, uh, you know, with, with my wife's accident says, that must have been so hard. I'm going to tell you a little secret. We've had harder. God was so amazing during that situation. What should have crushed us, grew us. What should have broken us, brought us closer together. Only because of God. Only because of His grace. So now we can walk into any situation and fear nothing because we know God goes with us. Amen. Amen. Are we going to work hard? We be the best that we can be. And I'm going to give you, a, this is just on a side note, but any of you play sports, pickleball, anything like that? Anyone? So when we were young, we weren't allowed to pray before uh, games. Like when I played my brother because that was cheating, you know? But I've got a prayer for you every single day. Lord, help me to be the very best that I can be and to walk fully in your ability and grace. Whether you're playing pickleball, whether you're doing your job, whether you're going into meetings, thank you, Lord. The very best that I can be. Help me to answer this. The very best that I can with your ability and your grace.